I have been playing the brand new game Stellar Blade, developed by Shift Up and published by Sony. It is a post-apocalyptic, futuristic, badass, flashy hack and slash game out now on the PlayStation 5. This video is sponsored by PlayStation. All opinions are my own in this review. And I've been working a lot on this review for the past week, making sure that I get everything covered. We are gonna go over what I think about the gameplay, the story, the setting, the performance, the graphics, the music, my verse and my experiences with the game. Also some tips and tricks are gonna be sprinkled in everywhere. I'm gonna be talking about the combat and how hard this game is. Or is it? And I always timestamp my videos here on YouTube, so if there's one specific topic that you're more interested in, you can jump straight to it. I basically do that in all of my reviews. And please subscribe to my channel for more video reviews if you find these videos helpful. <laughs> okay, so we are jumping straight to the main point of the game. The gameplay. What is Stellar Blade like? Well, you control Eve, a space colony dweller sent on a mission back to Earth to try and reclaim Earth back from some alien invaders called the nighty bus. Absolutely awful looking creatures. I mean, hello. <laughs> I gotta say the enemy designs, they're some of the most disturbing enemies I've ever seen. Stellar Blade is not an open world, it's more like an action adventure where you progress your way through various locations from one campsite to the next. Some areas in the game are more open where you can freely explore and other areas of the game are more confined and restricted. So it's a mix of both. And the campsites, they are generously spread across your journey. Now at these campsites you can rest, you can save, replenish your potions, spend skill points on this machine and also do upgrades to your exosuit. There's also a record player where you can change the music that's playing while you're at the camps. Now I want to say that the gameplay is very exploration heavy, for me at least. That is what I like to do in Stellar Blade. I am exploring everywhere. I am trying to find all of the secrets and chests and all of the documents and it feels like there are secrets everywhere. At least that is what I find myself doing all the time. There are ladders, there are ropes, cliffs and platforming like areas. And often when you come across doors that you can't open, you will find out later that they serve as a backtracking shortcut for you to open from the other side later. That happens sometimes. There are plenty of collectibles to find, like notes and skill upgrades on some human remains lying around. And basically I am trying to find everything. I'm very thorough when I'm exploring around in this game. You can also sometimes find outfits and of course another collectible in the game are the soda cans. Later you get like a display case where you can see all of the soda cans that you have collected. So that is a collectible and also an achievement to collect them all. They're kind of hard to find I gotta say. Now Eve can also swim and dive which you should always do when you find a body of water. Often there are hidden stuff to find that way. A couple of hours in you get to a hub area city and you also unlock a map. And this is where the game really kicks off and opens a bit more up. So hang in there. The first first hours of the game are more like a tutorial sequence to make sure that you understand the basic my cat is just carrying a toy. So the first hours they feel more like a tutorial to make sure you understand the basic traversal mechanics and the combat which is essential to understand. She is fine. Okay be right back. In this hub area city, there is a bulletin board containing a lot of side quests for you to tackle. Also, there are plenty of NPCs with side quests for you to pick up. Tons of flyers and documents with lore to the world lying around, which I now feel like pushes us into the story section of this review. Now, I found the story to be super vague in the beginning, not giving us much to go on at all. It made me super curious about the world and what is going on. I want a timeline, so super vague in the beginning beginning makes you intrigued into knowing more. The game starts off with kind of just throwing you straight into it with Eve and her comrades trying to land on earth but they are attacked by an IT bus. Everyone gets killed but Eve is rescued last second by Adam. So there's Adam and Eve clever. Later you are taken to that city that I mentioned and the story is full of politics. So far into my playthrough I'm feeling hungry for more information on the lore of the world and I feel like most memory sticks and flyers are short and I just want to know more, you know. The game is kind of sprinkling the story and the lore to you as you play, kind of slowly. But I feel like that is a good thing. It also pushes me into playing this game and I want to know more, that sort of thing. Now I gotta say the main story is a tiny 
a bit predictable. I am already predicting something. We will see if I'm correct. Like right now, as of recording right now, I am 20 hours into the game and I'm already feeling something that is gonna maybe happen. The general themes of the story is like there are people in cryo sleep in cryopods, maybe a bit of corruption and some injustice, post-apocalyptic stuff, you know. Now this is for me a gameplay game. And other than the exploration aspect being really strong in this game, there's something else that really shines and I want to say that is the combat. And the combat can be a bit hard. Now there are difficulty settings in the game. I am playing on... you guessed it. <laughs> easy. Now it's a parry, block, dodge and roll combat with all sorts of combos that you can do with light and heavy attack. It just about any input combination is a combo. It's a flashy and beautifully satisfying dance when you perfect a parry, for example, and when you perfect a dodge roll followed up by an attack. The skill tree that you access at camps can have you unlock more combo options and more potion storage and other attack and survival upgrades. You also have four special skills that you can sometimes use, uh, but these are not spammable, so you should use them somewhat strategically. And also later you get even more moves, so there's plenty of things to unlock in the combat as you play. Enemies also have a shield and they have a balance, so like there's plenty of depth to the combat. And like I said, the combat just gets better and better and truly satisfying once you just understand it. When you understand how to block, parry and roll, Beautiful stuff. Now, I am no expert, so I find some of the bosses actually difficult. Uh, I'm dying on average a couple of times on every boss. But I mean, all of the smaller mobs I totally annihilate. I've gotten that strong and that good. There is a gun for you also for some long range attacks, but I don't use it. Also, some other combat items are available, but I don't really use those either. But there is a mission in the game, a bit in, which is guns only. And that was kind of fun. Now, I love doing sneak attacks. They are so incredibly powerful. Sneaking up on the enemies from behind, that's so much fun. And you can also assassinate enemies from above. When it comes to equipment, you have upgradable exospines to equip and other stat increasing gear to further customize your playstyle, your build. Cosmetic wise, you can collect a bunch of outfits, which I know a lot of you are very excited for, earrings and such, and also so you can change your hairstyle and hair color once you have unlocked the hairdresser. Personally, I have found my favorite outfit and it is this one. I love it. That is my favorite outfit. Also, some of the other outfits are cute, but I'm loving the black suit. Also dyed my hair gray, looking really good. Now, presentation. <laughs> Here I will be covering graphics, music, sound effects, and voice acting. I think this game is graphically pretty. It's a game that looks good with sufficient attention to details, especially on the outfits. They are looking really good. The world is believable. It is dystopian. It's post-apocalyptic. Really pretty. The clashing of the swords looks so good. And it also sounds good. You can really feel that this is a triple A game. <laughs> I found several of the locations very interesting with its weather effects, the sun rays, basically the entire theme of the locations and what they're going for. Every single dialogue line in this game is fully voice acted in English, which is what I prefer. <laughs> You're gonna put me out of a job. Also something funny, I found Norwegian as an option for text in the game. <laughs> I gotta play my games in English or else I will be confused. Now when it comes to the music in the game, I decided to lower it quite a bit actually, because I wish there was music without the singing, just a personal preference, because most of the music is like pop songs with actual singing. And even though I just don't prefer singing music, I actually found myself humming along on some of these tunes. So the music is definitely memorable after playing and like when I was making myself a sandwich I was like humming this music like actual what and while we are in the settings I recommend putting on auto loot that is just gonna make your life easier Performance is absolutely glorious, no complaint. I am enjoying all the techie themes. I'm using my scanner to check if I've missed some chests or materials near me. And the menus look sleek too.
Now my verdict of Stellar Blade is that this is one of the best games and the best releases for me this year. That is how much I am enjoying it. I'm very much enjoying my time. It feels so good with a rumble in the controller, this controller. It's just such a satisfying game. Exploring the world is so much fun and the combat is so good. Platforming was, I gotta admit, really difficult for me in the beginning, but now I am such a platforming goddess. Playing on easy, I think it is just the right amount of challenging for me. But if you are the type of person that likes it a bit more difficult, that option is here for you as well. I'm doing every single side quest, I'm trying to collect absolutely everything in this game. I'm having fun with the combat, experimenting a lot, and I am simply taking my time. It's really a full-blown action RPG game, and I didn't realize it until now how hungry I was for this genre right now. It is well worth your time. <laughs> Another step game for the PS5. Now you also unlock double jump a bit into the game, that was fun. And also I enjoy smashing every single crate that I find and wrecking havoc, <laughs> just for the fun of it, I mean. And also when you are playing on easy, you sometimes get these hints if you somehow just don't know where to go and or what to do. That has helped me out a few times. Now my verdict is that I'm having such a fun time in Stellar Blade. Thank you so much for watching this review. Thank you for PlayStation for their review code and sponsoring this video. Check out my other videos on my channel if you want to and hit like on this review if you found it helpful. I hope you are enjoying Stellar Blade and let me know down below what you think of this game. How far into it are you? Uh, and you? And uh, definitely guys, I will see you later. Bella. <laughs> ja, du lider ingen nöd.